Bobby, thank you. Kara, Kyle, thank you for being a part of our, our church family. Harry, good job today. Mike, thank you. Appreciate all of y'all so very, very much and all the things you do uh, to make our church what it is today. Very important message that I know I was forgetting something earlier. I want to make sure everyone understands that next Sunday is a very important Sunday, uh, I believe. Uh, communion Sunday. Now, I know the question is that we do communion every Sunday. Yes, we do. And next week is just a special week where we are going to really talk about communion um, from beginning to end uh, of our service. Really answer some questions about why we do what we do, why we believe what we believe. It would be a little bit different than it normally is. So uh, men that are, are servers, uh, after you collect the offering, you'll sit back down for just a few minutes. So make sure you're here for it. Uh, make, make sure you're a part of it. I'm looking forward to it. We haven't done it in a few years, but I believe that it's important to do this about once a year uh, because we, we look to add people and gain people every single year. We want everyone to understand the importance of this. The most important thing that we do together as a church family weekly. No, it's not my message. and It's not even the great songs or the meditations. It's that time when we remember Jesus. The reason why we're here. So I'd like to make this a yearly tradition. I'd love to have every first, uh, second, sun, second Sunday of every year uh, be a communion Sunday in the years to come. But for now, we start talking about 2K18, or 2018. Uh, but I like to say 2K18 because it rhymes with it's going to be great. But what about uh, 2K18? What about this year? What can we expect here? I'm going to start a new series here in a couple weeks. Uh, what should I believe? And that's going to go into the next series, What Should I Do? And then the next series, What Should I Expect? And finally, What Should I Be Willing to Do? Or Are You Willing? Looking forward to it. I think it is going to be a great year. Now, everybody knows this character that I've got on the screen right now. Tony the Tiger. Remember, those commercials are still on there. Great! All those R's is why I'm thinking of him, because we're going to talk about that in a minute. I don't know if y'all knew this or not, but it kind of connects. Uh, the voice of Tony the Tiger for many, many years was a man by the name of Thurl Ravenscroft. Does anybody else uh, does anybody know what else Thurl Ravenscroft is famous for? He did a lot of voices, but anybody know? The Grinch. The Grinch. He was the voice of the song, uh, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. Uh, but... Completely unlike that, Tony the Tiger is just that, that positive character, that, that, that character that says, eat your cereal, today is going to be great. Well, the fact is, we don't need cereal, but what we do have is the Lord's Supper. What we do have is the knowledge and the, the, the hope and the joy in our hearts to know that we have a great, loving God who has sent His Son for you, for me, for all of us, if we just accept Him. And whenever we have that in our hearts, we should have no doubt that things will be great. So for this year, for 2K18, we know as Christians, yeah, there'll be ups and there'll be downs. But in the end, without a doubt, great. But we still have a job to do, don't we? It doesn't mean that we can just sit here and, and do nothing but come on Sunday mornings or just say that you're a part and not really do anything. That's not what Christianity is about. And that's not what 2018 can be about for our church. I believe we have a lot of momentum right now. We've had so many new faces, especially in the last six months. Uh, folks that just feel like they're part of our church family, like they've been here forever now. I think that's only just the tip of the iceberg. We have work to do still, a job. See, we're on a mission, if you would, like the Blues Brothers, right? We're on a mission from God, and we really, truly are on a mission. We talk about missionaries so very often. We have a mission field. It's Ohio County, Kentucky. We should take it very, very seriously. So today, I want to talk about five things that we should do this year. You can call it a resolution if you want, but the fact is, these five things are something that we should do this year and every year, and they're going to be five R's. So what are these things that I think that we need most of all as we go forward? Number one, we as individuals must repent daily. Now maybe that kind of sounds strange to you. What do you mean repent daily? I thought that was something I just had to do one time. 
No, repenting is a lifelong commitment of saying, I'm going to do my best to not sin, and when I do, I'm going to turn away from that sin, and I'm going to turn back towards God. It's something that we should do every single day of our lives, every single time we mess up, every day we should say, Lord, forgive me. Every day we should turn back towards God. Here's a couple of verses about repenting. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face. I will turn from their wick and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. So repenting is going to help us to be restored as baptized believers in Christ. It's that thing that we must do to re-energize. Acts seventeen thirty also says, God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. It's a command. We must turn from our sins and turn to God. So a couple of things that these verses are telling me right now that's going to be a, a real big part of us repenting. Humility. Humility. See, in order to truly repent, you must be able to admit, I'm a sinner. To be able to truly repent, we must be able to say, I've messed up. I'm not the greatest in the world. Whether you're brand new here, whether you've been here your entire life, humility is something that we as Christians must have. Because if you ever think that you're too good or you're good enough or you don't uh, need anything anymore because now you're there, then that's kind of sinful, right? Repent to that. You've got to have humility. So with humility comes the realization. And we remember these three words from a series last year. We've got to realize, we've got to rethink, and we've got to resolve to follow Jesus. Folks, do you realize, do you realize that you need to repent still? Do you realize what it is you need to repent from? Do you realize how important this is? If so, that's the number one step. That's part of humility. Now let's rethink. What, what can I do different? What do I need to do? I need to turn towards God. And let's resolve to do that. Let's resolve to, to make this year the year that we even do better than last year. Ever than, better than we ever thought we could before. With repenting. With following Him. We must remember that we still need Jesus. See, the day that you came down the aisle and you gave your life to Him and you were baptized for forgiveness of sins, you knew that day that Jesus was the Son of God. You were ready to take Him as your Savior. You knew it. Folks, we still need Jesus. Amen. After you came out of that watery grave, living that resurrected life, a life dedicated to Jesus, you still needed Jesus. John the Baptist knew that he needed Jesus. In John chapter 3, verse 30, we talk about John 3, we usually just talk about that, uh, the first part of that, we, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. But the second part of chapter 3 is John the Baptist speaking to some of his followers. And you know what he said? He said, he, Jesus must become greater and greater, and I must become what? Less and less. More of him, less of me. Now John, talking about his ministry, I think it, it goes right along with us as Christians. As repentant Christians, we must feel that same way. I need more of Jesus and less of me. I need more of following Him. He's got to be greater and greater in my life. And I've got to be less and less. The mission that we're on to serve Christ must be our greatest concern. And the mission that we're on to serve ourselves <coughs> must become less. And if that's not the case, we've got to repent. <clears throat> the second R. We're going to remain. Remain on that right path. Remain faithful. Remain on the path of righteousness. Now, however you want to look at this, we must remain following Jesus. Proverbs 2, 20-21 says, So follow the steps of the good. Stay on the paths of the righteous, for only the godly will live in the <coughs> land. And those with integrity will remain in it. Again, a responsibility for us, undoubtedly. And then this next verse. 
This, this next verse is really just my, my verse of the year, I've decided. This one has, has really touched my heart. I've had it touched. I've had it on a little note on my desk now for a few months. Think about this. 1 Timothy 4.16 Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Now think about that. Now, of course, we know Paul's talking to Timothy here, but this applies to each and every one of us. We must watch how we live. We've got to make sure that we're following what the Bible says and not just what we want. We've got to stay true to that teaching. We've got to stay on that path of righteousness. And why? For our own salvation's sake, surely, but also for the salvation, the sake of salvation of others. Why? Because if you identify yourself as a Christian, guess what, folks? The world's watching. Your kids are watching. Your neighbors are watching. Your friends, your co-workers, even your enemies are watching you. That's an example that we must set. A big time responsibility. Without a shadow of a doubt. It is for every one of us. I think we've got to continue to do that this year even more than we have before. When we remain on that path, on that righteous path, we must remember in our lives every single day that we represent we represent this church. We represent each other. Most importantly, we represent Jesus, our resurrected King. We've got to set the example. I believe that's what remaining on that path of righteousness is a, is a big part of. Setting that example by living the life that we claim that we should live. By behaving the way that we know that we should behave. By having the actions and the attitude that we know we must have. By being humble. And realizing it's not about me or what I want, but instead it's about what the Lord wants and what He has commanded us to do. Yes. So what about that path then? That example that we know we've got to set. How do we know where it is? Now listen, that, that's a very rhetorical question, right? That, of course we know where it is. It's been revealed to us. That's what this good book is all about. It's revealed by the Word. Psalm 119, 105 says, What thy word is a lamp unto my feet, the light unto my path. I think Jesus has, has made it uh, very bright for us. So we've got to follow Jesus. The bottom line, Jesus is the word. And we've got to follow him. And we've got to remain on it. On that right path. When we repent, and when we remain on that righteous path, I think that we're, we are going to see things improve in our own lives as well as the lives of others around us. Now here's part of that saying on that right path. This is the third R for today. Rejoice. This, I just can't say this one enough. I know we, we've talked about rejoicing so many times and we're going to continue to talk about it because it's a big part of who we are. So why do we, we rejoice? Uh, Romans 8.31 is the verse I decided to use for this. What shall we say about wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Folks, if that doesn't give us a reason to rejoice, what will? Amen. Amen. That joy that we have in our hearts, we talked about it during the holiday season. That exceedingly great joy that the angels told the shepherds about. Remember what I said then? It didn't end then. It only had begun. See, that joy, it's still there. It's there not only in December, but also January through November. It should be there every single day of our life. We might focus on that December 25th date as the date when Christ was born. But the, the simple fact is, there's so much more to it than that. We should celebrate that day every day of our lives. And we should most certainly celebrate the day that Christ rose from the dead every single day of our lives. What does the scripture say about the joyful attitude that we should have about, about us rejoicing? Well, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says what? Be joyful always. I know some of you are like, man, Mike, you use that verse all the time. Yes, I do. I think it's just plain and simple, isn't it? <coughs> Be joyful always. It, it's not a question. It, it's not a maybe. It's not a sometimes. It, always. And then Philippians 4.4 4 says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say... Rejoice. Two times here, Paul has decided to write to two different groups to say, Rejoice. Be joyful. Always. Let me remind you again. Let me say it. Rejoice. Folks, are you living a life full of joy? 
Are you living a life that is full of evidence of your joy? Are you rejoicing daily? We should. And remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength, like it says in Nehemiah, as you can see in the front of your bulletin today. And that strength, that always that we should have, and that, that time when we remember why we rejoice, because the sacrifice, because the resurrection, that should re-energize us. That should really revive us. Uh, on those times when you really get down and things are tough, and listen, I know some of you have issues right now in your lives. I know some of you are sad. I know some of you have lost. I know some of you are really hurting. <coughs> and it hurts me to know that. And just know that our prayers are with you. But please don't forget to count your blessings. Please don't forget to remember even now there is reason to rejoice in your life. Even now, at the darkest times of your life, if that's you, there's reason to rejoice. And maybe, maybe there's some of you that are, things are just going swell. There's some of you out there right now I'm so happy for. You, you've had new uh, grandbabies. Uh, congratulations, boy, by the way. Uh, you've had uh, n new job opportunities. Uh, things have really been good. You, you, your health's improved. Let me remind you, too, don't forget that there's still reason to rejoice for you. Don't take it for granted. Don't just say, okay, good, I'm in a joyful mood. Be, grasp onto that joy and remember why. It's not just because of the good things, right? It's not just because things are slow right now. The reason we have is Jesus. <coughs> Don't ever forget that. Number four, we've got to reach out. A big part of our responsibility. And you might say, oh, you just talked about this with remaining on that path. Yeah, that's part of reaching out, I believe. Because remaining on that right path includes reaching out to others to get on that path with you. Galatians 6, 9 says, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we'll reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. In Luke 12, 35 through 40, this is just the last uh, first verse there. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning. Be ready. I think that's the thing about reaching out. We must be ready. What, remember what it says in the book of Matthew? Go and make disciples. <coughs> This verse of Luke here, most certainly talking about being ready when Christ comes back. You never know. You, you, you don't know when that time may come. He's going to come like a thief in the night. So what does that mean for us? That means that we've got to be ready now. <clears throat> that also means that we've got to be ready by helping others to be ready. So we've got to be ready to help them to be ready because the time might be right now. Did you stick with me on that? I hope so. The bottom line is, folks, it's an urgent message. So what does it mean for our outreach? It means that we've got to be patient. But we've also got to be <coughs> persistent. We've got to have persistence. We can't just give up on somebody. Amen. Look around. Has there been someone that's been missing that sits in your pew? Give them a call. I don't care if it's been a few years. Give them a call. Tell them things are going good. Tell them, get back in here. Tell them not to forget about their reason to rejoice. Ask them, are you staying on that path of righteousness? That's part of the responsibility of a church family, y'all. We've got to hold each other accountable. It can't just be me. It can't just be our elders. It's got to be every single one of us. Every person here plays a part in this ministry. And if not, they should We've got to recognize the urgency. Kind of already talked about that. We've got to recognize it. Do you understand? Do you truly grasp? Because it's hard sometimes. I, I, I must admit, I have a hard time sometimes really reminding myself that Jesus may just come back tomorrow. Shoot, he may just come back today. Did you start planning for the future? You start planning for sermons for the next nine months? And it doesn't feel like that'll be the day, right? And we don't feel like we have even more time. And you know what? We probably do. Who knows for sure? We've got to have that urgency with what we're doing. That urgency to make sure that that guy never drives by again during a Sunday morning service because next time he's sitting right here because now he knows Jesus. But see, we can't just sit here and hope that that guy comes in here. We can't just sit here and say, 
well, let's just keep praying for him. One of these days, maybe. This is going to require effort. And for our reach out, our outreach, for, for our faith, for our church, it's going to require effort on all of our parts. And really, when you look at the scripture, this isn't a request. This is a command from Jesus that we must do. See what we got to do? We've got to fish for men. We've got to follow Jesus, and we've got to fish for men, and we've got to let our light shine, like it says in Matthew 5, 16. Let our good deeds glorify God. But when we're having our good deeds, when we're doing good stuff, whether it's a fall festival or a ready festival, or whatever it may be that our church family does together, we don't do it for the glory of you or me or just our church. We do it for the glory of God. Because why? We want people to know Jesus. Let's keep that outreach going. Finally, number five. We've got to rededicate. Every single one of us, I believe, can, can rededicate our lives. Maybe you're saying to me right now, but I'm as dedicated as I can be. I'm going to go back to number one on that one. We need some humility. It's more than just attendance. But attendance is part of it. It's more than just prayers. But prayers are part of it. Philippians 1, 9 through 11. I pray that your love will overflow more and more. I love this verse. And that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters. Church, we've got to rededicate ourselves to make sure that we understand what really matters. So what is it? I think we've covered it. <coughs> Living our lives to follow Jesus. Fishing for people. Understanding the urgency in our outreach. Rejoicing. What really matters? The whole Sunday next week is dedicated to it. This Lord's Supper. Not just the cup, not just the bread, but what it represents. Christ's sacrifice. So when we rededicate We've got to give more and more of ourselves so we can know more of that love, so we can understand, so we can grow in knowledge. Listen, I promise you, I promise you that every one of us should be able to grow more and more in our knowledge and our love. Even in our commitment. Because when we rededicate our lives, and we say, I'm really going to follow Jesus even more. That requires commitment, does it not? A lot of commitment. And <coughs> commitment is a sacrifice. Oh, no, not like Old Testament style sacrifice, right? It's a sacrifice for us. Commitment requires time. It requires your, your offering. Yes, your offering. I don't talk about money much up here, but Kevin nailed it earlier. An offering is something... That, that you should be doing, if at all possible. Maybe you can't start with a 10% tithe. I think that's a good benchmark. But maybe it's just time for you to start putting a few dollars in every week to get in the habit of it. <clears throat> and attending is definitely part of commitment. And it's a sacrifice. Sometimes it's hard to get up on a Sunday morning. Sometimes there are other things going on. But folks, if you don't make this hour right here crucial for your week, repent. Repent. This is the dedicated time that we have to come and worship Christ as a church family. Commit to that attendance. Rededicate it. And what about your study? Reading the Bible. Have we forgotten about that? Well, I hope not. It, it, it's more than just this hour. That, or even Sunday school or Bible study or Sunday nights. It's more than just that. What about your home life? Are you learning more? We can't expect that we can keep growing in knowledge and understanding if we are not committing the time. It's called spiritual discipline. 
Do you have it? That's also a sacrifice that we must make in our lives. Living the life. Practicing a life with the fruit of the Spirit, the kindness, the compassion that we must have as Christians is part of spiritual discipline. It's a sacrifice. By rededicating, we are saying less and less of me and greater and greater for Him. <coughs> Folks, these are five things I believe that we should do. Each of us as individuals, all of us as a church family, every single day of our life. And when we do these things, and much, much more, I think that it becomes very important, it's crucial, that with our faith, with our Christianity, with our walk with Christ, we make it obvious. Are you making your faith obvious? Hiding under a bushel? No. Are you making it obvious that you follow Jesus? Are you making it obvious that you fish for men? Are we making it obvious that we really understand what matters? Little trivial things don't matter. Reaching people for Christ matters. Us staying on the path matters. We're making it obvious that we get it. Do. You get it. We can't forget. We're on a mission. A mission from God indeed for this year and every other year. We've got to repent. We've got to remain faithful. We've got to continue to rejoice, to reach out, and we must rededicate daily to Christ. And it comes down to this, and maybe this is something that we all need to say more in our lives. And this is the thing I want you to write down for this last part of your bulletin there. Something that basically is our theme this year and will be every other year. I believe in Jesus. Amen. Do you believe in Jesus? Amen. Are you showing by repenting, remaining, rejoicing, reaching out, and rededicating. Folks, I believe so many of us here can say, I believe in Jesus, and mean it from the deep down bottom of our hearts. But we've got to do it more and more. Maybe today is the day where you're ready to make that commitment and say, I believe in Jesus for the very first time, and to make it official. Right now, you're going to have an opportunity to do that. Don't hesitate. Walk down this aisle. We, you won't be alone today. We've got a special treat coming up right in here in just a minute. Looking forward to it. Have you had cold feet with it? Warm them up. Rob Hicks fixed the heater. The water's warm. Have you been delayed? Do it today. Are you saying, no, I can't? Then we're saying, yes, you can. Why? Because I believe in Jesus. I believe He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. And today, and I pray every other day, I take Him as my Savior. Would you please bow with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You so very, very much for giving us the opportunity to believe in Your Son. Help us, Lord, to make it obvious, to show it every day that He truly is great. Lord, help us to make our church the, the best that we can make it, to follow You even more, to fish for men even more. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have, for the love that we share, for the guidance you offer through your word. Lord, I ask for a blessing upon our church. Help us to reach the lost of our community while strengthening our, our own understanding and knowledge of faith even more every day. Lord, I ask a blessing upon all those here today. Help us to set that example in our own lives. Or most importantly, we thank you for your son Jesus, the sacrifice he gave us in his resurrection. And that's why in Jesus Christ was awesome name we now pray. Amen. Would y'all please stand? <laughs>